Uh, the attendance tonight, 13,306 people. $1.2 million gate. The, uh, the performance of the night bonuses go to Luke Rockhold. It was a tough, it was a tough, tough tonight. Tough night to pick. And uh, Holloway. Fight of the night. Volante and Anderson. So congratulations, those guys all won $50,000. And for those of them sitting up here that had amazing fights tonight and didn't win a bonus, the UFC will be writing some checks this weekend. I promise you that. It was a great night of fights, and we appreciate all you guys. Who has the first question? Hello, sir. Good to see you again. Hey, Matt. What's up, buddy? Um, obviously, no matchmaking tonight, as usual, but <laughs> can you talk a little bit about Luke's performance and you know, what this means in, in the division when you've got a title fight coming up in a month? Luke looked unbelievable tonight. You know, um, yeah, I mean, look, look, look at what he did and look at who he did it to. Mm -hmm. You know, beating Machida like that is a big deal. You know, and, and, and you know, people are probably going to say, like, oh, Jocka Ray fought Chris Camozzi again. Let me tell you what, Chris Camozzi stepped up on six days' notice to take this fight. And I agree with Chris Camozzi. He's not the same fighter he was two years ago. And for a guy like Jocka Ray, Jocka Ray had everything to lose and nothing to gain. He's fighting the same guy. He's not ranked. He, he, didn't, he didn't complain about it once. He didn't say one word. He went right in there. He fought. He handled his business. So we're in a position right now where we got two guys who looked unbelievable uh, who, who could fight for the title next. It's a good problem to have. So who knows how Luke's going to feel after tonight? Who knows how Jock Ray's going to feel after tonight? You feel good tonight, but when you go home, we'll see how everything is. We'll see how this thing plays out. We'll see how Vitor versus uh, Weidman goes, and we'll make a decision. And then uh, can you talk a little bit about Paige over here? Because there, was, there were obviously a lot of questions about her hype level coming into this fight. Yep. She appeared to back everything up pretty convincingly. Yeah, let me tell you what. She's, you know, she's 21 years old. She doesn't have a lot of experience, but boy, she's a scrapper. She comes in and she fights. And uh, taking on a veteran like Felice and doing what she did to Felice tonight, you know. And she's got that thing, man. She's got that thing that I always talk about that you can't teach. They just have it. Everybody in my dressing room tonight wanted to meet, wanted to meet her. They're like, we got to meet Paige Van Zandt. So we brought her back there, and she's, she's got that thing, man. I'm and assuming, she can fight. I'm assuming that's one of the extra checks you're, you're going to write that you were talking about. What's that? I'm assuming that's one of the extra checks, that, the, the non-bonus checks that you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, she's going to make some money. Um, <laughs> I, I'm she's got to she's gotta get it all in before he shaves her head, you know what I mean? Sure. After she shaves her head, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Uh, so, so Paige, uh, real quick, for a lot of people looking at this fight, looking at, at the two of you, I think the assumption was that, that she was the stronger fighter physically, you seem to neutralize that pretty easily. Did you feel her strength in, in the cage? And, and if not, uh, what do you think was the difference there? Um, you know, maybe she was stronger. She obviously looks a lot stronger than me. But even when you're a black belt, when you're getting punched in the face, those things kind of go away. And when you're in a fight, it, it doesn't matter what skill set you have. If you don't have the heart, then like, your, your strength and your um, attributes kind of fall back. Sure. You feel like you answered a lot of the critics tonight with that with that type of performance, and was that dominant of a performance what you thought you would be able to put on? That was the plan. <laughs> I mean, of, of course, I wanted to go out there and get a dominant performance. Everyone wants to finish their fight right away. Um, I'm really happy with my performance tonight. I, I still have a lot to work on. You know, I'm I'm very young in the sport. Uh, every single fight, I'm going to change. I, I'm not technically the best yet, but I'm I'm at the perfect camp for that. Sure. And uh, if I could go to Max real quick. Talk us through, you know, your confidence level right now because this is, I think, six in a row and five finishes. And uh, we talked the other day about the, the one decision that you had in there. A lot of people said that was the best that you've looked, even though that wasn't a finish. But this probably trumps that, don't you think? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. You know, uh, all, all I got to say is uh, I got a great team. I got a great camp, and we're doing great things. So, uh, Dana White, come to Hawaii. Bring one down to Hawaii. Let's get one. You got like seven UFC fighters, Hawaii fighters in the UFC. I want one. I want to fight one back home. What kind of position does this put you in? Do you sit back and, and wait till July and see what happens, or are you ready to go out and take another fight and and let the title fight figure itself out in the summer? You know, I don't know. I'm not a matchmaker. That's not my job. You know, we see what Dana White, what uh, Sean Shelby, Joe Silva want to do with me. You know, we take one step at a time. That's what we've been doing, and uh, it's been working out for us. Actually, then, uh, now, that, now that Luke's here, if I could go to Mr. Rockhold for a second. Congrats on the win, guy. Uh, walk us through, uh, 
how things played out for you in the fight, because I don't think a lot of us are used to seeing Mr. Machida get kind of thrown around like that and dominated, and you, you made it look like just ridiculously easy. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of told you what I was going to do. If, if it touched the ground, we're going to be operating on different frequencies, and I knew I could dominate them. Uh, I just got good position, and, and uh, people, not many people can get away from me. So I, I thought he'd be faster on the feet. I could start finding his timing. I got a little, <clears throat> I was a little sluggish at first, but uh, you know, I started finding my timing. So the fight kind of played out like you told us it would a couple days ago, and you also talked about the potential to fight Chris Weidman back out here later this year, and you, you kind of called that out again. Do you mm -hmm. see that fight playing out uh, that way next month with him beating Vitor and possibly setting that, that kind of matchup up with you? I, I, that's what I foresee. You know, a lot of things, all, things always happen the way I dream them up, um, and I dream this one up with Lyoto, and I believe Weidman's going to go out there and handle his business, and, uh, and we can make this, you know, it looks like we're going to march into New York. We can have a good old-fashioned shake, shake Shack versus In-N-Out Burger. Let's do it. Uh, this question is from Max. We spoke earlier in the week, and you said that at this point in your career, you wanted to be one of those guys for the UFC, like Cerrone and a Henderson. You step up any time to take the big fights. You know, you did that tonight with a quick turnaround, and you performed possibly the best that we've seen you. I mean, how does it feel right now to keep things moving like that? And is that your intention, to keep things moving? Yeah, for sure. You know, one word, my nickname, blessed, man. I'm blessed, man. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to have a, uh, be underneath a great banner in the UFC, and... Uh, I just trained my butt off, you know, I had nothing but great things I, I got to say, and, uh, you know, shout out to Cub, he came to fight, I came to fight, and I was just a victor tonight. And it looks like, you look like you're having fun out there, your last fight against Cole Miller, you look like that, tonight you look that, uh, and uh, possibly the toughest guy you've faced since, or to date, so, I mean, how's it feeling there, are you seeing things different, are you feeling a different rhythm? Yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm, I don't know, surprisingly calm the last couple of fights, you know, the, Every time I'm thinking, I'm, I'm just going in there, I'm just walking. The nerves get to me, but the nerves is like, uh, it's like I feel great nerves, you know? It's not nervous like I'm scared of something. It's nervous that I, I know what's about to happen. Something great is about to happen. And this question's for Paige. You know, obviously there was a lot of attention coming in tonight. How did you feel, you know? Could you feel the moment? Could you feel all these eyes on you that you, you, know, you obviously performed excellent, but could you feel this big buildup for a, a, a big night? Um. Yeah, I felt it. I mean, I had a, an amazing support system, and I, I have the best family and best team in the world. I, I think that's, I try to soak it in every time I, I get to be in the octagon. I'm just so blessed. Like, when I walk out, I just take in all the fans, and that's something I could have never dreamed would have happened to me. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not nervous the night of the fight. I just, I, I get to soak it all in. And this question's for Luke. Um, you know, when Machida got up at the end of the first round, he looked like he was wobbly. Uh, could you feel that? When, when you were uh, at, when you hit him with some big shots at the end, could you feel that going out of the first round? And what was your mindset going into the second round? Yeah, I was just trying to get him in a compromised position. Uh, he was a little slippery. I think he came in with a good sweat. What was going on? So I was trying to hold position, really, you know, find that kill shot. Uh, I had his head pinned to the mat, last like three seconds left, and I hit him with an elbow, and I knew it hit real hard, right on the side of the head. And started, I looked at him as he got up. He was wobbly, and I. I kind of figured he was uh, he was hurting at that point. I wasn't even sure if he was going to get back into the second round, but, you know, I saw him, and I think he was a little shaky after that. Uh, first question for Paige. You know, the whole week leading up, you were all smiles, and you never really seemed to buy into the, the kind of trash talk uh, that Felice had for you. But from the, you know, stare down at media day to the stare down at, you know, the weigh-in, she was kind of, you know, mean-mugging and everything. I mean, what did it make the win more satisfying to do what you did out there and really dominate her, uh, you know, the way you did tonight? Um, for me, every win is satisfying. <clears throat> um, you know, I just have – I understand that some competitors – have to get in that mindset. She's about to go in and do a fight, you know? So some, some people have to get in that mindset, like you have to hate your, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to hate your opponent. And I don't have to do that, you know? I, I'm, it's like my birthday every time I walk out to the cage and, and this is what I love to do. I, I don't have to hate the person I'm fighting. And you never, you never seem to let it affect you that you know people were kind of giving you a hard time, whether it was the Reebok deal or getting a, you know, a main stage fight on Fox in your second fight. 
But do you feel like you did kind of prove the hype a little bit? Because let's be honest, Felice was a veteran. You know, she, she did have some big wins in her career. And then to go out there and dominate her the way you did, I mean, that's, that's a pretty big statement. Um, yeah, of course. I mean, it felt amazing. And I just plan on going out there and training for every fight I have and winning every fight that comes my way. And a uh, question for Luke. Uh, obviously, a lot of people knew going into the card originally, it was, you know, you and Machida and, and Jacare and Yoel Romero, you know, who came out looking the best would probably get the title shot. It's not Jacare's fault, obviously, that Yoel Romero got hurt. But do you feel like there's any chance that that title shot's not yours at this point? I know they're not going to match make tonight, but it seemed like you made a pretty strong statement finishing Machida. Yeah, look, I said it before. I'll say it again. I, I, this is my show. I was going to come out here and make it my show. I was going to dominate whether he was fighting you well or not. Uh, no offense to Jacques Ray, but I am the number one contender. I'm, I'm the best guy around, and uh, it's my title shot. Uh, I've dominated everybody in my path. I've, I've beaten Jacques Ray, and uh, I deserve it. And I know that you've already made it very clear you, you believe Chris Weidman's going to win. We know the history we talked the other day, the history you have with Vitor. How do you feel like you match up with either one of those guys? Uh, you've been in there with Vitor, but obviously you've been thinking about the Weidman fight a lot, I imagine. Yeah, I've been in there with Vitor. I, really, I'm, I, I'll go out there anytime. I, I'd love to uh, rematch. Look, all, all the greats get caught. It's the champions that come back and prove themselves and get on top. I'll, I'll, I'm the best in the world, and I, I believe I'll beat Chris, and I'll beat Vitor, and beat anybody else in my path. So, I want, you know, I want the title next. I want the winner. And a uh, question for Jacare. You know, I kind of mentioned, obviously, it's not your fault that Yoel Romero got hurt. You went out there and took care of business. Uh, but where do you feel you sit right now? I mean, obviously, I know you said you want the title shot, uh, but do you feel that's changed at all because of Luke's performance, or how are you feeling right now? Não é só não é só culpa que o Yoel Romero não lutou. Você foi lá e lutou, e você acha que ainda tem é, o Luke teve uma boa performance? Mas você acredita que você tem ainda a chance de lutar, os direitos de lutar pelo cinturão? Yes, I believe 100%. It's my time. I'm the number one contender. I fought Luke long time ago. Everybody knows. He don't beat me. The Georgians fight for him. I come for fight. I'm ready for the title. I, I, it's my five, time, five fight in the UFC, fifth fight in the UFC. Man, I can't finish anybody in my division. It's my time. And uh, one question for Benil. Obviously, you took this fight on a little bit of short notice, but to dominate a veteran like Jim Miller, there was a lot of people saying it was almost like a passing of the torch you know, from one guy who's been a legitimate top 10 competitor pretty much his whole career to you kind of entering that top 10. Did you kind of feel that, you know, in this fight, even though you didn't get a lot of time to prepare? Um, I don't know if I would say I dominated uh, Jim Miller. He's, he's very tough. Uh, and as far as passing of the torch, I think if Jim Miller wants to, if he wants to be, uh, you know, back to the top 10, he wants to be top five, whatever, I really think he can do it. If he just has to make sure his focus is good. I, I, I'm just happy with the performance. I, I wish I could have done a little bit better. Question for my, uh, Max. So um, tonight you, you faced a, a fighter who uh, was uh, ranked above you, and, uh, and he's a guy who's known for a lot of things such as uh, power, speed, uh, creativity, uh, toughness. Um, looks like you went there and you, you showed all those same attributes, but more. Uh, can you talk about that? Yeah, you know... Um, Everybody uh, was counting me out on the feet, you know. They was like, oh, how do I got to do, do uh, what Frankie Edgar did to him, you know. I, I'm not Frankie Edgar, guys. I'm not no wrestler. I'm not no jiu-jitsu guy. I'm a striker. Max Holloway strikes. Go see, go look at any of my fights. When do I ever try to take someone down, you know. It doesn't happen. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to strike with him, you know. He's one of the elite strikers in our division. And I wanted to show the world that I'm right, I'm right there up with the elites. Question for Ovens. Uh, you've had two knockouts in a row really quick. Your striking game seems like it's really improved. Would you talk about that a little bit? Um, it's a lot to do with game plan and my coach. Um, that combination I'll throw all night with the jab uppercut is the number one combination we're working on. I expected him to go for the takedown. I mean, I knew I was going to take, get taken down. It's just a matter of fact. If he can hold me down, and I knew he couldn't. So, you know, and um, when I cracked him, it was all I needed. A uh, question for Luke. Hey, man, I was hearing you, uh, you had some travails kind of coming into this fight, battling bronchitis, things like that. Like, what was your, how were you doing when you came into this fight and leading up to it? 
Yeah, I just try to take everything as a blessing in disguise. Uh, you can't bitch about every little thing that happens. Um, got a bald spot. Went surfing and hit my head, cracked my head open, and I had to glue it. Um, that sucked a couple weeks ago. Um, training with, with super glue in your head is not good. That's not a real bald spot, people. So actually, I had to shave that off to train. Um, yeah, <clears throat> bronchitis sucks. And, uh, yeah, I was, you know, felt a little sluggish, but whatever. You know, I, I knew I was going to go out here and handle my business, and uh, things happen, but whatever. I'm, I'm here. One other question for you, man. It looked early on like you were sort of calibrating, you were trying to figure out the range. He caught you just a little bit, like during an exchange. I saw you kind of shake your head as if to say, like, Okay, wait, I'm, do that again, but do it different. Was that going through your mind when that happened early in the fight? Yeah, I was a little nervous to exchange with, with Machida, given his history is so fast and elusive and this and that. And, you know, I knew I could strike with him on the outside and I could pick my shots. And so I, I was just a little nervous, I think. And then I could see him. He, he wasn't as fast as I thought he was when he was coming in. So I started, to, you know, to relax a little more and uh, just have to believe in myself a little more, I guess. Um, I, yeah, that was... Yeah, I, I, he wasn't going to be able to hit me clean. I should have just relaxed more and actually struck more on the outside. I, I think I could have easily beat him there, too. Dana, I meant to ask this earlier. Do you know, do you know if anybody was transported to hospitals or anything? I mean, I know Leo. Yeah, Machida here, so. was transported straight to the hospital. Uh, Felice and Anderson. Okay. Um, the, the Jimmy Hedis uh, stoppage with the ear... We saw you tweet about that. Can you just talk about that a little bit? I've I know tweeted too here. fast, man. You got to slow down on the tweets. I tweeted too fast, and I saw the ear, and I was like, "Don't, all right." So, so you, you were right, New Jersey. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, we don't need an ear falling off on Fox, okay? So, we, we can. Uh, that was bad. At gotcha. first, I was like, "Are you kidding me?" They just stopped that fight. That was starting to look like a really, really good fight, and, uh, and then I really saw the ear. Okay. You know, you start taking shots, or a finger gets in that ear. Yeah, it's, that's no good. That's gross. Okay, thanks. Huh? It's bad. Yeah. First, first for Luke, um, this was a southpaw versus southpaw fight, and both you and Leota really had not faced a lot of southpaws over here. Um, how did that, did, that, did that affect the fight for you at all, or not really? Uh, I like fighting southpaws, and I, Leota hasn't fought a lot of southpaws, so mm -hmm. I, I knew it, it would obviously eliminate the left kick, uh, it opened up the leg kick and open up a couple of different variations. Um, so, it, I mean, I was cool with it. I, I like I liked the uh, southpaw-southpaw fights and uh, just, uh, yeah. I mean, his, Leoto's main attacks are his left punch and his left kick, so I knew I could just stay outside of that and just watch for that. I mean, really, that's all I got to look out for. And last for, I guess it goes for both Benil and Max, since it kind of applies to both of them. You both seem to have been benefiting from just how active you've both been keeping. Um, could you both talk about that a little? And also, how soon do you feel like you want to get back in for another fight, keeping that in mind? Um, f fighting consistently has been really important for me. I feel like I'm uh, improving really fast. But this fight, I actually felt a little bit stale. I think, uh, I think just a short notice... Uh, I, I'm gonna have to take a little bit more time in between fights. I think 30 days is a little, a little too short. Uh, but yeah, just consistency is is important in the sport. If if you don't fight, you know, you're a fighter. You you should fight. If you don't fight, you're gonna slow down. Uh, you know, uh, Dana White always tell us, man, we only make this money once. Go get it as as much as you can in this little short amount of time that we have. So, you know. I, like I said, I fight anyone, anybody, anywhere, anytime. You know, the only thing that we got to check is injuries. So we figure that out. And if I'm 100% healthy, I'll get right back in the UFC call. They get the same answer for me. It's yes. It's no questions. It's yes. We take the fight. What date, what time, where I got to be. Dana, I got two questions for you. Yep. Uh, number one, we never got your reaction to the New York lawsuit getting dismissed. Um, you know, I don't know enough about it. I don't know enough about that. I'm so confident. I mean, if it doesn't happen this year, come on. Come on, New York. It'll be crazy. It'll be just nuts if it doesn't happen this year. So we'll see what happens. Well, that was sort of my second question, too. What's the official word on where you think we stand with that? I think we're in a pretty good possession. I mean, like I said, it would be – I don't even have words for what it would be. 
if it doesn't happen this year. Um, we, we have a date held on, on, in December at the Garden, and uh, I expect to be there. I expect to, to use that date, be here in New York in Madison Square Garden, and, and, and do this this year. Well, how about this? We know. Do you think, do you think we, we have time to do an Ultimate Fighter? Me and Weidman in New York versus California to build it up, get the community behind it, and then we'll walk into Madison Square Garden. Probably not. Uh, but, but hey, <laughs> I like that you're thinking, though. It's, hey, I I'm like just that. saying, get yeah. the community behind it. Really, you know. All right. hey. Yeah. Got it. I understand. Dana, what? on this platform, you've got a lot of young stars up on here, a lot of people who really just cl climbed the ladder a lot today. On a 1 to 10 scale, how good was this card? It was a great card. It was a great card. Uh, um, you know, I, I, the, the uh, Vellante, uh anderson fight was insane. It was a great fight. There were so many great fights tonight. What Max did tonight was unbelievable. Paige looked great tonight after a lot of criticism and a lot of pressure coming in. Um, you know, I love, I love that Jacare, you know, didn't say, you know, he had everything to lose and nothing to gain in this fight. Didn't bitch about it. Didn't say a word. Walked right in, handled his business, and did it. What he did tonight, OSP. Looked unbelievable. I had to watch it twice to see the punch that landed. I didn't even see it. Um, he looks better every time. I mean, all these guys. Everybody up here put, had an amazing performance. The card was awesome from top to bottom. You know, it was awesome. I have no complaints. Uh, Luke, I'm here. It's Phoenix. Hi. Hi. Congratulations. Um, first, props on the walkout song. Uh, right. Thank you. Thank that you. was awesome. How did it come about that you chose to do that? It was just came to your head. I've just been getting into these walkout songs. Uh, it started with Bisming, uh, did the Battle of New Orleans. Uh, I was getting a lot of heat from all the Brits, and so I was like, oh, I'm gonna. Someone came to mind, and I was like, Oh my God, perfect. The Karate and then, Kid. Uh, and then, and then, a friend like mentioned it, and I was thinking, I'm fighting a Cheetah Karate Kid. You know, uh, New Jersey song. So it, <laughs> everything just made sense. I was like, Oh. No doubt, 100%. It's on. That was awesome. I don't know. I don't know if I can stick to one walkout song. I don't know if I can keep this up though. It's gonna be hard to keep the bar that high. Yeah, because what would you choose for Weidman? Then? I, yeah. It was like, it was like Biggie too. Give me some time. Give me some time. I'll think about it. You know, I'll <laughs> surprise you guys here. And also um, having DC in your corner. Can you talk about what that was like? It's nice to have a suited corner. You know, it's a, it makes you look very proper, <laughs> established corner. Uh, no doubt. Uh, yeah, I just want the corner, the best corner for the job. And uh, he was my wrestling coach and everybody else, you know, so I, uh, I got a great team. What can I say? So Paige recently turning 21. So how do you celebrate tonight? Um, actually, I just want to go to the beach with my parents and relax. <laughs> That's all I have planned. Beach with her parents. What a good girl. <laughs> Take your surfing. Not every 20 year old girl says that. A <laughs> uh, question for Dana. Right here, Dana. So um, both of the uh, guys here to your left and right, uh, Jacare and uh, Luke, did exactly what they were supposed to, right? Uh, Jacare needed to, I guess you could say, win quickly. Perform. To, 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 to show that, you know, he's just as good, right. if not better than he was. Luke did the same thing uh, as far as dominating a, a very respected fighter. Yeah. Now, now, what do you do? Toss a, do you flip a coin? Or, or maybe if there's an injury with a belt match and, like, the winner is out for a while, maybe these two guys face each other? Uh, you know, these guys, like I said before, these guys just fought. Let's see how they feel in a couple days. Let's see how this Machida Weidman fight goes down. And uh, it's a good problem to have. Both guys, looked, both guys performed and looked unbelievable tonight. And uh, I don't know. We'll see how this thing plays out. We haven't even made it to the to the fight yet. Vitor and uh, right. Weidman, that's a scary thing. And uh, I guess we should probably stay in shape. I'm just saying. I'll be ready to go. <laughs> Quick question for Darius. Did you feel that your matchup with Jim Miller, that he likes, since he likes to do a lot of grappling, uh, a lot of less technical, he goes for a lot of submissions, maybe less position. Do you think that matchup played into yours? You have a lot more fundamental technical grappling? Could you repeat that question? I'm saying, sorry about that. You have a much more fundamental technical approach to grappling, it seems, than Jim Miller, who goes for a lot of uh, less position, more submission. 
tries to do a lot of different things. Did that go better into your style? Or was that a good matchup for you? I, I didn't really think about that, to be honest with you. Uh, the, the goal was just to, just to kind of beat him everywhere in the jiu-jitsu. Uh, stay on top, keep the pressure. I knew if I, he got on top, it would be really difficult to sweep him or submit him. He has, you know, he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Like you said, he likes to go for a lot of submissions, uh, unorthodox submissions. He, he goes for the knee bar all the time, gu uh, guillotine. So I, I just made sure I was ready for those things and then just stayed sharp uh, everywhere else too. We'll take two more questions if there's two more. You got one? Right What'd you bring your own mic? Yeah, all right. <laughs> Dana, uh, this season, Ultimate Fighter, we're gonna see uh, ATT versus the Black Zillions. If it's successful, what are the chances we're gonna see Novo Onal versus Team Alpha Male? Uh, it's possible. I mean, I, I think that there's a lot of great rivalries out there with, 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 with gyms. And uh, you know, it's funny because every time we go into the Ultimate Fighter and I say it's this team versus th that team, it's really not teams. They're, you know, these are all just guys who, who end up on the same team to train together, but only one person wins the ultimate fighter in each weight class. This is actually team versus team, and there's a whole different dynamic to it. The energy in, in this season is, I, you're gonna be blown away when you see how crazy this thing is. Um, so it's definitely, a, it's definitely a, a possibility. We'll see how it plays out. AK versus Longos. And this question's for, you know, kind of both Dana and Paige. Um, the strawweight title picture right now is pretty much wide open. You know, you have you know, Joanna up top. Uh, Paige has a lot of steam behind her, but she's still very, very young in her career. So is, do you have to be kind of, uh, do you take a different approach with how you bring uh, you know, uh, somebody like this along, or do you just kind of let things go where they go? The problem with Paige is, you know, she's young and she's 5-1 and one now, but she's gonna, probably going to be ranked, you know, in the low top 10 now. I mean, she's, she's going to be 9, 10, 8. She's going to be in that ballpark somewhere. So uh, it, it, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, see it. we'll see how we, how, how we move her. But, yeah, she's, she's definitely in the, uh, in the danger zone now, you know? And, and Paige, you know, how do you feel about that? Is it uh, take the opportunities as they come? Are you ready for whatever? Or is there something that you take your progression at a measured pace? Um, of course, I'm going to take any fight that's offered to me. But with all the strawweight fights coming up and with the ranking system being so new, I, I think that we will see a little bit more accurate ranking of who's available for the title shot. I, I beat number eight, so I think that'll move me up a little bit, but I'm, I'm still not top five. I, I think I, I have a lot more to prove, and we'll go from there. And that division's still really young, too. She's young and the division's young, so see how it plays out. Well, thank you guys very much. We appreciate it. Have a great night. Thank you, New Jersey.